A question I received in one of my sessions on the Eucharist and the Bread of Life discourse is, are Catholics cannibals? Since we claim to consume the body and blood of our Lord. Now on the surface, this may seem true, as indeed we do profess to consume the body and blood of Christ. And Christ himself mentions this very explicitly in the Bread of Life discourse in John chapter 6, verse 53 to 54, where he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So are we cannibals then? The answer is no. So how then do we go about answering this objection? Let's turn to the Catechism for answers. Point number one, CCC number 1373. Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, is present in many ways to his church. He is present most especially in the Eucharistic species. What we consume is alive. Christ is not dead or will die as a result of us consuming the Eucharist. What we are consuming in the Eucharist is nothing less than the Christ who is risen and alive. As Christ himself said in John chapter 6, verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, and the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is fundamentally different from cannibalism because cannibals only eat what is dead or killed or will eventually die as a result of being consumed. Point number two. The Catechism number 1374 tells us that in the most blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, the body and blood together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, and therefore the whole Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained. And in the Catechism number 1377, it says, the Eucharistic presence of Christ begins at the moment of consecration and endures as long as the Eucharistic species subsists. Christ is present whole and entire in each of the species and whole and entire in each of their parts in such a way that the breaking of the bread does not divide Christ. In consuming the Blessed Sacrament, we take in the whole of Christ, not just a part of Him. Whether the host is smaller or bigger or even a small fragment of the host, it doesn't matter as we still consume the whole of Christ. This again is fundamentally different from cannibalism, as cannibalism only a consumes certain parts of the body. Hair, bones and nails are not consumed. b consumes only the body, not the person. Point number three flows from point number two. Christ does not become less as a result of us consuming the Eucharist, as in the case of cannibalism, where the flesh of the victim is gone forever after being consumed. Christ doesn't become less when more of us receive Holy Communion. He doesn't change at all when we consume Him. Point number four. The Catechism number 1367. The sacrifice of Christ and the sacrifice of the Eucharist are one single sacrifice. The victim is one and the same. The same now offers through the ministry of priests, who then offered himself on the cross, only the manner of offering is different. And since in this divine sacrifice, which is celebrated in the Mass, the same Christ who offered himself once in a bloody manner on the altar of the cross, is contained and offered in an unbloody manner, whereas cannibalism is inherently violent in its killing of the victim in a bloody manner. Point number five. 
The Catechism 1376, the Council of Trent summarizes the Catholic faith by declaring, Because Christ our Redeemer said it was truly his body that he was offering under the species of bread, it has always been the conviction of the Church of God, and this Holy Council now declares again, that by the consecration of the bread and wine, there takes place a change of the whole substance of the bread into the substance of the body of Christ, our Lord, and of the whole substance of the wine into the substance of His blood. This change the Holy Catholic Church has fittingly and properly called transubstantiation. We do not receive our Lord in a cannibalistic form, as in raw flesh and blood. We receive Him in the form of bread and wine. Point number six. When cannibals consume the flesh, or any food for that matter, it eventually will be digested and become a part of the body. However, in the case of the Eucharist, it's the other way round. When we consume the Blessed Sacrament, we become more like Christ. In essence, Christ consumes us and we become a part of Christ's mystical body. As the Catechism states in number 1391, the principal fruit of receiving the Eucharist in Holy Communion is an intimate union with Christ Jesus. Indeed, the Lord said, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Life in Christ has its foundation in the Eucharistic banquet. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. Cannibals receive life that is temporary in consuming human flesh. But we, in receiving the Blessed Sacrament, receive life everlasting in union with Christ. In summary, the Holy Eucharist is actually the supreme example of anti-cannibalism because the Holy Eucharist is life itself and gives new and everlasting life to all who receive, while cannibalism seeks to destroy and take life and achieves only death in the end. I pray that as we fervently come to receive Christ in the Eucharist and in conforming to the will of the Father like Christ, we may one day like St. Paul declare confidently that I have been crucified with Christ and yet I am alive. Yet it is no longer I who live, but Christ living in me. Amen.